Hi everyone, this is a video tutorial for how to do a set different part of a titration problem. So once again, we look at the substances that we have. We have a weak acid that is not its conjugate base, so this is not a buffer. Don't use Henderson Hasselbalch. So first step, look at your major species. Once again, we have HNO2. Weak acid stays as a whole piece for the most part. Sodium hydroxide is strong, so it would separate into its component ions. And then water is always in there because we're looking at aqueous solutions. So what we have to do now is look at that list of major species and check to see what has priority. As always, the strong substance has priority. So we're going to look at the reaction of hydroxide. Whenever you're putting something strong into solution, there's always going to be the first reaction, which is the priority reaction. The hydroxide reacting with the best acid in solution to completion, forming water and the conjugate base. Once again, it's completion, which means stoichiometry, so we're in terms of moles. So we're going to have our initial moles here, the change, and the final conditions. Using this information here and this information here, we will determine how many moles of hydroxide we begin with and how many moles of nitrous acid we begin with. So in this case here, we have, multiplying our values together, we have one mole of hydroxide, and we also have one mole of nitrous acid. Don't care about water, none of that. So at this point, you might notice that you have exactly the same number of moles of each substance. That means you are at the equivalence point. Sometimes it's good to identify where you are because it gives you some kind of idea as to where you're going to continue through going through the calculation portion. So in this case, there's no real limiting reactant. You're just going to use them both up and you're going to form this. Remember, they change all by the same number because there's a one to one to one mole ratio. So they're going to have exactly the same change. When you look at the final conditions in the solution, you don't have any of that none of that, all you're left with is this one mole of nitrite. This point is not a buffer because you don't have any conjugate acid left over, so no Henderson. Um, and we don't have any amount of hydroxide or H+, so we can't solve for pH at this moment. So what we need to do is recognize that this substance here is a weak base. And because of that property, we have phase two, which is the equilibrium reaction of the nitrite with water to form its conjugate and hydroxide. And there is what we're interested in. What is the concentration of hydroxide that it produces? Because we can use that to solve for the pH. So we do an ice chart now, which is in terms of molarity. And we have to make sure you plug that in here, okay? So make sure you don't forget on this transition here, you need to take this and divide it by the total volume. So it's going to be the 0.5 plus the 0.25, which would be 0.75 liters, which gives you 1.3 molar. I can now take this number, plug it in here, still don't care about the water, none of those to begin with. We totally used them up in the previous step. Then ice chart as we normally have done that calculation, minus x plus x plus x. So at equilibrium we have 1.3 minus x x and x. Okay? So that would be the ice chart portion of the calculation. So the next phase is we need to take that equilibrium row and plug it into our expression for K. Okay. So we have our K expression would be the concentration of hydroxide times the concentration of the nitrous acid all over the concentration of your nitrate. Don't forget that this equation here contains hydroxide, so you do not want to use Ka. You need to use Kb, which means first step is you have to solve for Kb. So Kb is equal to Kw over Ka. So what you're going to do then is set this equal Kw is our constant, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. And the Ka value is the one they gave you, 4 times 10 to the minus 4. 
solve for your KB value, which is equal to 2.5 times 10 to the minus 11. Okay? So now we have the information we need. We just have to take this row, plug it in, and solve. So we'll get rid of the first step since we don't need any of that information anymore to continue on the solving. So we have x times x over 1.3 minus x is equal to 2.5 times 10 to the minus 11. Notice that this number is really small, which mean, means that the reaction isn't going to proceed very far in the forward direction, so we can get rid of the x down there. So we're going to solve for our value of x, and when we do, we get a value of 5.7 times 10 to the negative 6. Remember that this value here is equal to the concentration of hydroxide. So what we're going to do now then is solve for our pOH and then we're going to solve for our pH. Okay. So remember the two equations. pOH is equal to the negative log of your concentration of hydroxide and pH is equal to 14 minus your pOH. So we're just going to plug everything in and solve for our answer. Okay. So we have pH is equal to 14 minus the negative log of 5.7 times 10 minus 6. Plug it into your calculator and you get a value of 8.76 as your pH. And that is how you solve for being at the equivalence point in a titration.